I wish I had um, a great story about the moment, you know, when I decided to become a teacher. I do know that when I started out as a young kid, people told me I was smart and that I should be something great. And I thought something great was an attorney or uh, a mogul, you know, a business mogul or uh, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. And so when people would ask me what I wanted to be when I was a little girl, I'd tell them I want to be a lawyer. And they'd pat me on the head and say, yeah, that's, that's a future worthy of your talent, right? Well. That went all the way through high school. And my senior year in high school, I was in a class, and our assignment was to research the career that we wanted once we got out of high school. Now, I've applied to college. I've already decided journalist or attorney because that's glamorous, it's sexy, right? You see shows about attorneys and journalists all the time, and they're always sexy, right? They're always hot. So I thought, that's what I'm going to be. and. So I started to research those careers, but something whispered inside of me, mm -mm, you're going to be a teacher. And I remember when I started telling people, they would say, a teacher? You, you're more talented than that. You, you, you don't want to be a teacher. But the moment that I made that decision, the rest of my life made sense. And I've never regretted it. I don't think there's a, a career that's sexier. I don't think there's a career that's more inspiring or interesting or, or, or fulfilling than being a teacher. It was the exact right thing for me to do. And I don't think there's another career that was worthy of me other than teaching. So people look at me all the time and they say, teacher. And I say, yeah, teacher. Yeah. And I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I feel sorry for you, lawyer. I feel sorry for you, journalist, because there's nothing more. It, it's there's just nothing like it. There's nothing. There, there, nothing else would have inspired the passion that I have other than teaching. This is the exact thing that I'm supposed. This was what I was meant to do. Most teachers have a model of a teacher who made a difference for them. And that's why they go into teaching. And I did as well. I had a couple of teachers who periodically would say to me, Jeffrey, that's a really interesting idea. And I felt so alive in that moment. I felt so valued. I felt like my mind was a worthy machine inside of my head and that it actually, what I was thinking had value and it had value to somebody I cared about. And that was really important to me. Um, wanting to be able to create that context for other people is a really important part. As well as understanding that schools are not incredibly well-organized institutions and that we all have to struggle against what should be a better institution within which to work. So it's an interesting challenge. How do we help every kid learn in an institution that was never designed to help every kid learn? As, a, as an undergraduate student, what really sparked my interest in becoming a leader, I read as an undergrad the, the lives of two men, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. And once I learned them, I wanted to be like them within the realm of education. So I couldn't, I, I could never fill the shoes of either man, but what if I can lead effectively in the spirit of both men? So that inspired me to want to be a leader because prior to my introduction of the two of them, I was a follower. I was a follower of some of the worst people, but it made me a leader of, of young people and a leader of educators. I wanted to be a teacher my whole life. Everything about me was about being a teacher. I love the idea of learning. I love being in school, I love being part of school, I love being the teacher, I love being the learner. It's amazing when your brain can add stuff. And I like to watch it in my students and I like to watch it about me. Um, I've had a very strong vocational calling for a long time, but I can remember sitting in my third grade class watching a masterful teacher by the name of Joyce Cromer teach and thinking in my head, I'd like to do what she does. And I never really lost that vocational pull. Teaching for me, to be quite honest with you, I. I thought school was too fun of a place to leave. I mean, I have to hand a lot of credit to the coaches I had. I played a lot of volleyball in school and went on to coach it myself and it played a huge role in my life. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't want to leave an environment where sports and arts and learning and fun is a part of every day. I mean, I, I, would, I just didn't want to leave school. As soon as it looked like some form of my schooling was coming to an end, I dove into the next version of it. Uh, the reason I went into education was I had an epiphany. Education was not my first choice. Uh, I had my heart set on being a marine biologist. I then pursued uh, a 
career in, or a degree in fisheries biology. And while I was pursuing my master's degree, I was a graduate teaching assistant. And coming from a family of educators, I, I swore that education was not for me. But while I was snorkeling in streams in Western Maryland, I had the opportunity to teach undergraduates biology. And it, it was just from the first moment, I, I really found my passion. And, and I knew that my, my career or direction in life was not going to be in the sciences. It really was going to be working with students, helping them follow their passion, find their passion. And from that point on, I, I redirected my focus, moved back home, and pursued a career in education. Mm -hmm.